finally tonight I get a chance to unbox a Xeon D2100 series processor on a motherboard from Gigabyte. This is a first for me, uh, my first Gigabyte motherboard in ooh, uh, six or seven years. Uh, so yeah, time to get going. This thing is from Taiwan. It's on loan to me directly from Gigabyte. And it's the model MB51 PSONR motherboard, which you'll soon see. Now, Xeon D2100 has the capability of going to far more RAM, uh, well beyond the 128 gig. 256, I think, is realistic. 512, not so much, because of uh, limitations on what DIMM sizes you could find. But there are numerous attributes to this motherboard that's a bit different than the mini ITX form factor I've been used to with Super Micro products I've been using most recently. So it's great to see someone else in this market also making a Xeon D2100 series system. Well, I use the word system. It's a motherboard. So this is the makings of the system here. All right, we have a very well packaged motherboard and something along with it. Now, I have to use my own memory dims is my understanding. And that was one of the conditions of the loan that I had to provide my own memory and storage, which is fine because I told them the specs on this 32 gig memory DIMMs I have that I use with Soup Micro products, and they should be acceptable for use with the Xeon D2100. Uh, as they were with a Super Micro Xeon D2100 I tested also, called the SYS E300-9D system. Sorry I'm making all this noise. Hopefully my lapel mic is canceling some of that out for you. How do you cool a Xeon D2100 and is it possible to do an aftermarket solution? So I don't think this is sold in the United States at this time, but it's an integrated heat sink slash cooling fan for the Xeon D2100 series systems out there. And maybe not just a uh, gigabyte for instance. So this is awesome to see such a design. I would love to see something like this also for uh, Xeon D1500 series systems. So it looks like there's nothing actually covering the thermal paste other than this plastic. So I'll be very careful with that. And uh, looks like a nice design though. I'll say that. All right. Uh, the fan looks like a decent cubic feet per minute. A little hard to tell because I can't read the specs on it. Uh, beautiful to look at. I'll give it that. My initial first impression is quite favorable. Strong factory smell of uh, paint, it would seem. So Gigabyte MB51-PSO uh, DDR4 revision 1.0 of the printed circuit board. And some sort of assembly number here, which is blank. And you will quickly notice eight dim slots and you'll notice the fan uh, power leads. Now this seems to not be using a cable in a sheath, so they're just kind of uh, bare cables here. And uh, I'd say the routing looks a little bit odd by default, but all right. Now let's get into the, some of the various features of the motherboard here. And we'll do a close look of the printed circuit board together. I do not have an instruction board uh, manual handy, but I do have the memory dims handy. So let me uh, go ahead and grab those memory dims. Plenty of humidity. Don't need an anti-static strap today. This particular system has a whole lot of storage ports. Let me explain. Okay, that's eight SATA ports. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 SATA ports. Whoa. And we've got a connector here. I believe that's for U.2 drives. I got to look that up again. I admit I've not looked at the manual lately. Uh, here's an M.2 slot, which is the differentiating factor. Gigabyte has an M.2 M.2 slot in their Xeon D2100 and two PCIe slots. So this is very appealing from an expandability perspective. 
you do need a bigger case or chassis for the system. That would be the downside, um, but you also the upside would be a lot more memory dim. So more affordable to get to some crazy high uh, gigabytes of RAM someday when you have four slots rather than just, sorry, eight slots rather than just four. Okay, moving along here, we've got Ethernet interfaces. I'm going to need to install ESXi 6.7 on here to see exactly what's going on and what driver is needed. I believe it might be the Intel um, X722 series of driver here. I'm not quite sure for 10 gig. Okay, switch there. Presumably reset. Uh, IPMI out of band management by Aptio. Two USB 3. BGA and good old serial. Now let's look at the construction here. Okay, uh, very rigid. I'm not feeling a lot of play at all. Uh, that's good. And we've got some more numbers here. Let's, let's get back around here with things vertically. Okay, made in Taiwan. What else is going on? AS Speed or A Speed. Uh, it's got the word Avicent on there. That's a familiar company to me for keyboard, video, mouse, KVM switching. So it should be interesting to see how the out of band management looks on this device. It'll be my first time looking at a Gigabyte motherboards out of band management. Anything else uh, to note here on the motherboard? Um, not spotting anything offhand. We have a lot of you know, motherboard standoff, screw points here, attach points. Typical consumer length here. And that goes right in. And it fits with the standoff the way it is. Nice choice, 2280 is the most common. But 22110 with super capacitors, you're gonna be out of luck on this motherboard. Physically, it impedes right here. So that's not gonna happen. You'd have to use a PCIe adapter, which is not a big deal. And there's many of them available, including things like this, which are two-sided, so you can get four at full speed if there is bifurcation in the motherboard. All right, so if there's bifurcation in the BIOS feature set, we turn on bifurcation here, like 4x4x4x4, four by four by four by four, and you can get four M.2 devices in each slot. Why am I specifically calling that out? Well, that could get really interesting. What if you could get four M.2 here and four M.2 here? You could do all NVMe, um, maybe even vSAN. Not fully supported vSAN. This is not a system uh, that would probably make it on the vSAN compatibility list. In fact, I'm going to need to point out, you're currently going to find uh, information that vSphere 6.7 is supported, but you're not going to find it right on the VMware compatibility list. You're going to find it on Gigabyte saying they claim support and have tested on 6.5 and 6.7. Okay, so I've said a lot about the system. I need to get into using it. That's going to need to wait for future videos. Let me just wrap this one up by just simply installing some DIMMs. Now I'm going to need to break open the manual. Uh, I believe I'm going to be using blue and we'll have to see um, how I'm supposed to install them when I have only two DIMMs total. But for now I just want to try slots on either side of the system. I just want to get an idea of the friction, the amount of downforce needed. Very straightforward. Let's do the same over here. And I believe it's unlikely this is going to be the correct config, but again, I just want to try either side of the system. Now I'm against a, a table here. If you have standoffs and how much board flex there is, it's going to be hard to tell from what I'm doing here. All right, so let's flip this on over. And it appears not there's not a whole lot of silk screening or uh, letters on the back, but we can have a close look at some of the surface mount devices here. And a whole lot of solder for all the DIMM slots and the PCIe slots, which are full length PCIe. 3.0 by 16 each.
Hopefully you found this quick video helpful. Make sure to check out more videos to come with some more hands-on testing once I attach a power supply and, well, a monitor or at least an ethernet cable to get going with initial configuration and testing. Thanks again for watching and for visiting Tinkertry IT at home. Oh yeah, there's a speaker in the motherboard too. Thanks.